Hello everyone, this is Sharon Mistretta and welcome to a presentation regarding certain strategies that I would like to show you for future presentations that you make in either your doctoral program or in your contexts. So what we want to do first is to review that you can use for as per the assignment you can use any presentation software of your choice most of our class either used the voice thread or a powerpoint presentation which are fine but i wanted to discuss with you some alternatives the first thing that i wanted to go over with you is that right now i am using software that is free and it's a presentation software called screencast omatic and Screencast-O-Matic allows you to pull a frame over your screen and add audio. And whatever you pull the frame over, you are recording on your screen and it is uh, recording your voice as well. So this is free software that you can use and it's called Screencast-O-Matic. What I do is once I am done with the video that I've recorded, I upload it to my YouTube channel. Everyone that has a Gmail automatically has a YouTube channel. So I can show you where that is in these little uh, nine dots at the top of the screen. You can click on YouTube and then you can click on your channel. So this is where I archive all of my videos, especially when I'm teaching technology and I do flipped lessons for my classes. So uh, at the Screencast-O-Matic has a very nice feature that once I am done with this video, I can simply upload it to my YouTube channel and then take the link or embed code and embed it either in a website or in a discussion post. So that is Screencast-O-Matic and YouTube. So now also what I wanted to show you is an article that I found on LinkedIn and that has to do with the length of presentations. So if you've ever watched a TED talk, you will know that it is 18 minutes or less. And the reason is because they believe that it is long enough to be serious and short enough to hold people's attention. So if you have a person that usually does a 45 minute talk and they have to bring it down to 18, then they really do make things very concise so that they're actually selecting what they want to talk about. So that is Screencast-O-Matic that I'm using right now, which will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. I am striving to do 18 minutes or less. And Screencast-O-Matic has a very nice counter in the lower left-hand corner of my screen so that I can know how long my video is taking. Also, a nice feature of it is that every once in a while, in order to get some software running that I want to show you, I can pause my video and then resume it so that I don't have to take any of, my, of the time from my viewers that will be taken as to when I'm getting my software running. So that is something that's a very nice feature. Another piece of software that I want to present to you is something called PictoChart. Now PictoChart does have free accounts and what is very nice is it creates an infographic. So what I usually find in my students presentations is that they are very text heavy. So they might copy and paste portions of their reports into a PowerPoint presentation, and then they read the presentation from the PowerPoint slide that they just copied and pasted in. So perhaps it is best that you do a presentation. This is a engineering design model presentation that I do for my teaching practice, the NASA Endeavor program. And it has to do with engineering design models. And what I have here are several slides that I have just icons on the screen. And then I can use the text that I might have written up as my script so that I am not reading the script and the viewers are actually listening to me and to my explanations of what I want to teach them. 
So here I'm just going to show this presentation and keep in mind that this is acting like a voice thread because I have already pulled a frame around my screen, my laptop screen, and I'm recording my audio. So then all that I have to do is show my presentation and I'm going to begin at the first slide slide here and it will allow me to introduce my topic which is engineering design models and what steps I'm going to take to show them about the different models. I'm going to be talking to you today I would say about engineering is elementary, NASA design process and the IDEO design model and then I just simply press my right arrow and then I can go to the next slide and you see that I can add more of my narrative to the slides but I am not reading it and I am not going to make anything very text intensive so that I can if I wanted to have an icon that is a little list so to speak I can go over the aspects of each of my design models talk about them just without reading them and then also what I can do is I can discuss the similarities and differences between the models and just have a small amount of text and it will get my point across that they're listening to me. Now one thing that I wanted to show you is that in lieu of putting all of your references in a slide which I'm going to argue most people will skip over but if they really wanted to take a look at your references, if they're doing the same type of research, they might want to take a look at it. So right now, I'm going to introduce you to the QR code, which is very easy to add. And a QR code is read from your user's mobile device, a QR reader, which is something that I have my students use in their presentations that they in turn take to their classrooms because I teach teachers. So this is a very easy way to have a student navigate to a website by simply bringing up a QR code or a QR code reader on either a tablet or an iPhone or a mobile device and then it automatically navigates to that website because it's extreme first of all you can't click on anything in a presentation a student can't click on this if I'm, I'm showing them they're watching a presentation especially as a flip lesson uh, in the evening of they're doing homework so in lieu of a click we have something that they can read I'm going to escape out of this right now because I want to show you how to um, develop this. I'm just going to pause my video for a second, which is the beauty of Screencast-O-Matic, so I can set up my software. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back now, and ordinarily what I would do is I would ask my student to pause their video and to read the QR code, but I want to show you how to set that up. So right now what you're looking at at my screen is that I have something called Air Server, and Air Server will link to my iPhone or my tablet, whichever I'm using, so that I can show you what I'm doing on my mobile device. Now, so that's what you're seeing over the left hand side and you're seeing also my very cute puppy Gus on the screen. And what I wanted to show you is that the Chrome browser, which is what I use, and I highly recommend it because it is extremely flexible and gives you a lot of tools. So what I'm showing you here is that there's something called Chrome extensions and they're free. And in the Chrome extension web store, I downloaded a quick QR code generator. So for any website that I'm going to that I want my students to look at, I simply generate a QR code. So for instance, when I had this link here that I wanted to show you about an 18 minute presentation, I would simply come up to my QR reader and you see that it automatically filled it the QR code generator. It automatically filled the uh, URL, which is Uniform Resource Locator, which is the address of the website, into this little window here. And then I'm telling it to uh, generate a QR code for me. And when you click on the Save Image, it downloads it for you. So that is what you would upload to your presentation. So I'm going to go back to my presentation here and I'm going to show you that I loaded up, I uploaded this QR code to my presentation. You can also do this in PowerPoint if you wanted to. 
if you're using PowerPoint to present your data. Again, I would, I would also encourage you to make that data brief, perhaps in bullet points on the PowerPoint. But this is a tool that you can use for um, reading your anything that you wanted your user to utilize on your um, on your screen. So now what I'm doing here is I'm going to bring my air server back and what I want to show you is that I am going to be able to read this QR code with my phone. So you're looking at my phone right now and I just pointed it at the QR reader. So what I've done is instead of listing all my references, I put them into a Google document. And when I put them into the Google document, I share it in view. So uh, you want people to view your references, not to edit them. And I'm going to copy that link. When I come over to my QR reader, I'm going to just put mine that I copied in there because what I did was a view instead of an edit. It'll take exactly what is on that screen and I happen to be in an edit because I'm the author. But right now I am putting in the view. I'm making a different QR code and all that a QR code is, is it's just a picture of um, that can be read by your device and it has the data in it to navigate to that website. So what I did was I embedded that in my presentation. So if my um, viewers wanted to see this, then they can place uh, the, um, they can use a QR reader. Or when I am embedding this particular presentation in Blackboard, then I can then put the same link that I placed. If they don't want to use a QR reader, I can just place the link here. I'm not going to put it here because this is my presentation and no one can click on a link. So I don't want to put it there, but I will put it into my uh, discussions. So let's go over to our discussions right now. And I'm going to go into resource presentations and I'm going to um, do a thread action, which is, excuse me, I'm going to create a thread. And I'll be right back. I'm just going to now pause the video and I'm just going to uh, create a code for my presentation. Okay, I'm back again. And what I'm doing, I'm showing you the share properties of my presentation. So I chose to share it inside of the, the edit. And what I'm doing is I'm making this public so everyone can see it. Now this is the link to the Picto chart. This is not the link to my YouTube video that I'm about to upload, but I wanted to finish talking to you about this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy this link and I want to show you a, um, a trick that uh, you need to know regarding Blackboard. So when I am doing a is the link to the picto chart presentation. What I want to show you, and um, this is something that is just a little bit of a nuance, but it really does help your classmates. When I highlight this is the link to the picto chart presentation and I place the link in here, which is the link path that I just copied from PictoChart. What I wanted to show you is one more step, and this is usually a step that I find that students will miss. What you want to do is you want to open in a new window. Click that, and let's just say, um, I'm just going to put PictoChart right here. The reason why I'm putting a title in here is that this is for readers that have an assistive reader software and hardware on their computer in case they are um, uh, visually impaired and when they hover over this link it will read it to them if they have a reader so that's why you put that title in there and I want to insert that so now this will open up in a new window so when I submit this 
and then click on it, you're going to see that it opens up in a new window so that when I close that window, it comes back. And that's how it helps your, um, your classmates. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to delete this because I have more to put in, which is my presentation to you. So that is what I'm going to be finishing up right now on Screencast-O-Matic. And when I end this video, which is now 15 minutes long, I'm going to have it upload to my YouTube channel and I'm going to embed it in our website. So I hope that these hints helped you for future presentations. Thanks.